gonna come back. I'm gonna go diving. And maybe spear fishing. I'm excited. Car is loaded. Ready to go. So we are in the car on the ferry. <laughs> Interesting, right? <laughs> Welcome to Wild Water Woman. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's Paul. Hey, what's up? And Emma and Rick. How's the vis today? Visibility, mm, maybe one meter. <laughs> <laughs> Emma likes to drive like that. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> no risk, no fun, right? <laughs> Whoa! We made it! We're here! Yoohoo! Oh, it's nice and slippery! <laughs> Brand new things! All getting geared up right now! Yeah! Oh, yeah, you look ready! <laughs> you don't! <laughs> Very much not ready. Unfortunately, <laughs> Rick forgot his diving mask. Yeah. But he's just trying to figure something out. Maybe somebody else on the island has a spare one or whatever and can... Making a call to the community. Yeah. Okay, uh, we've got, I've got a lead. Got a lead. Nice. <laughs> Hello everyone, um, thanks for tuning in and um, I would say visibility is looking pretty sweet. This specific location is um, a bit of a hit and miss sometimes um, when it comes to fish and marine life in general. As you can see, I'm just like looking around, scanning um, the surrounding area, um, looking for anything really, and um, there's really not much going on. Shortly after this, we got checked out by a sea lion. It was in the frame there for a second. Um, I wasn't really recording much. Um, it was a single sea lion came in, checked us out, and then left again. Never saw it again. On my way down, I saw a lingcod. Um, it's really hard to see, but it's right in the middle of the picture right now, laying on a rock. A small lingcod uh, laying there, and I was planning to. Um, film it on my way back up um, face to face basically and when I turn around I was not able to find it and, and when I watched um, rewatched this video I can see it but while I was down there I could not find it again as you can see I'm like desperately looking for it and it's on the right hand side um, on a different ledge down there um, you can always see it like kind of quickly for a short period of time um, I was really hoping I would find a male lingcod guarding um, a nest of eggs or anything like that, but um, couldn't find any. On this one, um, I went all the way to the bottom and um, I was more focusing on the left, but something on the right caught my eye. And it's those orange legs of the Puget Sound king crabs. I was so excited to find it. Um, those guys are masters in hiding. If they have their legs tucked in, they just look like a rock and there's no chance you would see them unless you really have your like face right in front of them. 
Um, so I was very lucky there and it was actually the first one I ever found. Let's talk a bit about the regulations and best practices here. As I have to admit, I wasn't properly informed before we went out. This crab may look like it's huge, but it's actually more of a medium size. There's no size regulation, but I wouldn't want to harvest a crab that is smaller than this one. These crab can get massive and we want to avoid taking the young ones. Puget Sound king crabs are usually in way deeper waters. They come up from the depth to mate every winter for a few weeks though. The juvenile ones stay in shallower depths all year round, but the adult ones are pretty rare to find outside of their mating season as they are very elusive. You're only allowed to take the male crabs. If you want to know how to, um, how to tell male and female apart, keep on watching, I'll explain that in the end of the video. When harvesting those crabs, we always want to make sure we don't take them from the same location over and over again. A Puget Sound king crab is something really special and it should remain that way. Harvesting one or two per year is enough. There's actually a big question mark behind population studies and they are close to commercial fishing. Unfortunately though, they still unwillingly end up in big fishing nets all the time. Spearfishing and harvesting marine life comes with a big responsibility. We should always try to be well informed about what we are doing and to be mindful about the bigger picture. And here's where I did a mistake. Anyone can shoot a fish or harvest a crab. But what makes us good sparrows is when we practice spearfishing in the most sustainable way. In this case, sustainable means knowing the regulations and understanding the best practices. I didn't know the regulations well enough that day. The daily limit of Puget Sound King Crab is 1. And although I already had one, I continued to look for another one for Rick and Emma. I never had the intention to keep two. One is more than enough for two people and as I said, it should remain something special. But I still wanted to make sure that Rick and Emma get one too. I think this is kind of a gray zone, as I might have found both, but I didn't keep both. If you go prawning with a friend and both of you have fishing licenses, each of you throws a prawn trap, one of them only has 5 in there and the other one has 150, 
but the daily limit per person is 125. You wouldn't throw 25 prawns back into the ocean, you would give them to your friend, who only has 5, since his daily limit is 125 too, but he's not nearly close to it. Looking back, we should have been informed better, and maybe it would have been better to put the smaller one back too. Even if Rick or Emma would have found it, I think taking one crab at one location is enough. The big one was massive and we could have definitely shared it. Long story short though, know before you go. <laughs> I am starting to get really cold, so I'm gonna get changed now. We're back on the ferry. Yeah, we've been in the water for um, almost two hours. I found those two um, Puget Sound king crabs. I've never tried them before, so I'm really excited to prepare it later. Um, I definitely want to try it plain, uh, maybe with some garlic butter or something. But I, um, I've been craving some sushi, um, some homemade sushi for quite some time now. So I think I'm gonna go for that as well. <laughs> and then Rick, he finally got um, a diving mask. Um, how cool is that, that you just uh, start to reach out to different people, make a few calls and boom, there you go. <laughs> you forget your dive mask, here you go. Here you have one for the dive. Uh, the guy later on came and picked it up again, so that was pretty awesome. I'm glad that Rick was able to join us on that dive, at least for a little bit. Visibility was great today, um, and that specific spot where we went is always um, almost no current, no matter how the tides are, um, so that's a big bonus. It's always great to go diving there. Uh, ferry is just arriving, so I'm gonna jump back into the car. Here we go, yo! No. <laughs> you gotta give it a kiss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pointy. <laughs> um, so the big guy is for the family and the little one's for us. <laughs> it's not so little. I know. It's gonna be good dinner. It's and probably tomorrow as well. Don't run away. Hey! <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. Hi. <laughs> um, so, we're gonna gut and pre cook the Puget Sound King Crab now so that um, it has some time to rest and then I can crack the shells and um, cook something else with it. So let's get the crab out and gut it. Um, I've never done that before. I've only done that on a red rock crab before and a Dungeness. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna try. Uh, Rick kind of set me up with an idea of what to do. So uh, let's just try it. I'm gonna grab the crab. Okay, so he is so nice and snug in that bowl. <laughs> Fits perfectly in here. <laughs> 
and this is plenty for two people I would say I don't think we will eat this in one day I think this is more like a two or three day thing it's a male um, if it would be a female this wouldn't be pointy this would be round more like a half circle um, this is how you can tell them apart and you're not allowed to harvest any female Okay. Okay. I'm gonna um, get a big pot, water, salt, bring it to a boil, and then uh, drop these guys in there for um, 15 minutes, I guess, something like that. So my water is boiling. Let's add some salt and the crabs can go in. If there is a way of opening them easier, please let me know in the comments. And also, how do you eat your Puget Sound King Crab? I was wondering if there are any other recipes. I, I could imagine they would taste very nice in uh, some pasta dish. Um, I think I'm gonna try, with the leftovers, I'm gonna try doing a sushi tomorrow. Um, I don't know, let me know. Let me know how you prepare it. I've just learned that if you don't take the guilt out of the crab, it's gonna get really smelly when you cook them. I didn't know that before, now I know. Next time I'm gonna do it better. It might've been better if I watched a YouTube video or something on that before I uh, jumped right in. But um, I did that with um, peeling them now. So I watched a YouTube video from um, one of my favorite YouTube channels, Chris Sampson. And um, he has a very uh, cool way of um, cracking the shells, the legs, and peeling it. Um, and I'm gonna try this now. Let's put it in here. And then you uh, close it with the kitchen towel. And then you grab one of these. And then um, don't like, like don't smash it, <laughs> but um, you know, kinda just wanna crack it a little bit and then you can just pull the meat right out that might have already been a little too hard but yeah so here we go this is our crab meat so Paul is not home yet and I'm gonna cook something now but um, <laughs> before I do I'm gonna try it just the way it is um, in case you're wondering, I kind of took two forks and like pulled everything apart for um, what I want to cook. Um, but here's a trunk. And I've never had Puget Sound King Crab before. I've had Dungeness and Red Rock Crab and then some other crabs from other places around the world. But um, there's King Crab. Mmm. That's delicious. It's so, it's kind of sweet and it has the consistency of, I would say, chicken, a little more soft than chicken. It kind of melts in your mouth a little bit mm. and salty. I really like the taste.